Hey everybody, it's a glorious morning. Black Friday, day after Thanksgiving. Had a wonderful Thanksgiving and uh, yeah, just, just couldn't be a better day. Um, it's a little cool, but uh, we're back on the Volkswagen, this is OK Fixer. And uh, in this video, this is another part to race to the DMV. We're going to be covering uh, heater vent installation, hose installation, radio, we'll clean up the underside of the dash, glove box, speedometer cable, checking all uh, electrics, making sure they work, lights in the speedometer, um, hood to pop, trunk pop, uh, windshield installation, and vent window installation, now vent window, uh, pop-out window installation. Um, in the last video we uh, put our body on our pan, sealed it all up, and I explained some of the problems that if you don't measure very well. And here's what you end up with, is you end up with stuff that's just slightly askew. Now, that's not a lot, but it's it's a little bit and uh, a little bit is a lot on one of these cars. <laughs> so what we have here is we will have a, a gap over there in the rubber but the deal about that whole situation is you can pull the rubber has like a little little lip around it so you know that'll work just fine it'll be okay. Um, and I think that's probably the only problem that we're gonna have uh, other than the breastplate might not fit like it should. We might have to do a little adjustment to it also or jam it in one corner or something. So, you know, what are you going to do? <laughs> Not too much. All right, uh, the first thing I'm going to do, <clears throat> because this stuff is going to need to dry, is uh, what I did is for these quarter windows, I did a little quick sand and then a quick sand, yeah. <laughs> and then I, I sprayed them with some matte clear and uh, kind of doing the same thing with the, with the front glass and I'm going to shoot it with a little bit of matte clear and the reason being is uh, I'm going to tape off all this stuff and then shoot the whole car with matte clear and that way underneath all the you know where, where it really matters there'll be some protection or a little bit more protection and I'm pulling out all my my rotten vents and uh, I have new ones Okay, so I'm going to start sanding this and then paint it probably while it's drying. What I'd really like to check, I really want to check that washer squirter because I got a story for you. I hooked mine up one time in a car and it wasn't hooked up for a reason. <laughs> Filled up the bottle with solvent, hooked it up screwed it onto the tire and I heard this I heard the, the bottle you know go tss, you know like it was airing up and then I heard this tss, and I looked inside and there was a stream of washer solvent spraying my back glass I mean that's how powerful it was and the switch was bad it blew the inside out of the switch and just dumped a, a liter of washer solvent in the car it's pretty funny okay so uh, let's get let's get working on this um, I've put in two coats of clear around both of these quarter windows uh, in the front here I uh, I cut off my antenna because it wouldn't come unscrewed with the, uh, the, the uh, wonder wheel or whatever you call it. And from about this point all the way over, I kind of lightly sand it and I give it a couple of coats of clear. So now we can put, you know, our moldings on and our wiper motor and our squirter nozzle and our antenna and our windshield. Um, kind of cleaned the dash off a little bit. I took these screws out and then I put some uh, kind of some shiny McShine shine on it uh, to kind of help it make it look black. <laughs> I don't know what I put on it. I can't remember. Uh, I think I even, <laughs> I don't even think I used stuff for dye. I think I used tire shine or something. I don't know. Um, so next what we're going to have to do is since we're kind of deep into the still, 
uh, the speaker is going to need to be replaced. The brake lines are going to need to be replaced. I'll have to look at that wiring and the lights. In the there's some there's some that have just come come right out. So we'll have to fix that. Uh, and oh, I want to clean this kind of up. And I haven't decided what I want to do yet with that. I have taken my brake master cylinder off. These are the lines. I'm going to copy them with some new. And I, th I think I even have new ends. And I have new little rubber grommets that go in the master cylinder. Provided the master cylinders <laughs> any good at all. So uh, let's get going with that. And uh, uh, clean it up. And master cylinder is next. In fact, uh, this is the original which is completely amazing. It's not broken. And so I'm cleaning that out. I was thinking a Q-tip, but I think a big dauber would work better to clean that out with that and some brake clean. So let's get that done and uh, we'll move forward. All right, kind of clean things out a little bit. And uh, oh, I didn't show you my patch, my patch. I put a little sealant around it. So we'll paint that later. Uh, I gave uh, several coats of clear to this and under here uh, new new blue brake lines kind of clamp them together uh, we have master cylinder cleaned out in full and uh, I closed off all my bleeder screws um, keep your nipples the little caps for the bleeder screws got that one there I'm all the way back here because I'm going to start bleeding from the one farthest from the master cylinder that would be the right rear and I got my bottle and it has brake fluid in it and as you pump the brake it'll go down bubble but when it comes when you re return it'll suck, suck fresh fluid up in there instead of sucking air so you can just keep pumping back and forth until it's clean this is one way to do it by yourself so let's uh, test that master cylinder before we get any further because we put carpet in there and the master cylinders spraying yeah you get it okay see that on the floor right there now that's pretty freaking funny that's brake fluid <laughs> you know you know before you put your body on you might want to make sure all the connections are correct and they don't leak in other words you'll be jacking the car up climbing underneath it like I'm fixing to do now okay evidently up in there I got in a hurry and I didn't uh, didn't get that tightened uh, there's a there's a T there and the line that comes out from under the uh, you know alongside the the tunnel there it's got 11 millimeter head on it and I didn't get it tight uh, there's a line wrench but there's a problem with a line wrench in a tight area is it's a uh, six point or five point sometimes you have to make your own so I took an 11 millimeter cut a slot in it and then I pounded it flat so I could get in there probably if I cut it off about there I would have been a little bit easier to access it but I got it tightened up and uh, we've got our we've got our drawing pretty good from our vacuum I'm gonna use this vacuum and try try to make it work that way I have brakes. They're not very good because I don't have them adjusted yet. We'll probably bleed them once more too, but I, I don't have them adjusted because I had to roll it back and forth by my by my own, so you know, I mean by myself, so I didn't have them. Anyways, um, we got uh, some of that. I squirted down in here. It was the dum-dum. And we're going to do a little Smooth that over with a wetted finger. Okay. Uh, next thing uh, we did is uh, we replaced the speaker. And you know what that means. It's speaker blow time! All right! But the problem is, as I turned it on and it went whoop. nothing <sighs> all right well uh, 
What are you going to do? Uh, I'd blow up another speaker for you, but uh, but uh, we don't have any uh, old speakers around our house for some reason. Um, uh, if you want to see another speaker blow, send your speaker prepaid to D. Allen, 729 Northwest 114th Street, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, 73114, and we'll get right on the air for you. Mm, okay, uh, so before it gets too dark and I can't do anything anymore, um, I hook my water bottle up to my, and I just put water in it, up to my tire, and um, at first I only had 20 pounds in it and it wouldn't work, so I put 35 in it. I don't know if I, it's because I cranked that a little tighter to open that valve or it's just old or what, but it works now. So uh, I just have that just kind of there, and it doesn't like to return probably be better if I put a screw the switch on it see it doesn't like to shut itself off so I'm, I might spray a little let go in there and work on that and see if I can't get the switch to work better but it does work and it didn't come shooting out all over the place so we're good there sorry it's so dark in here I had to close the garage door because it's cold had a cold front come through last night um, we have this green wire right here and I want to show you this on the uh, on the wiring diagram and notice it's on the first first leg of this uh, fuse box one two three four five six seven eight nine so it's a ten fuse fuse box and this green wire is the power wire that's going up to the wiper switch there's just a power wire in a, in a, in a ground going up to the wiper switch all the rest of them go out so let's have a look in the book and I want to show you this while we're here also I want to count these of course we have three wires coming out of the ignition side this is for the steering column three wires coming out of the ignition side the black one's going to be the power uh, for the ignition circuit that's going back to the um, well actually it's going to the fuse box I think yeah it's going to the fuse box and then that one going out of the fuse box that's a power wire that goes to that first fuse the big red one is the power in and the red and black one is the signal to the starter. Then there's six wires that come off the other stock for various things. Uh, and we'll discuss those in just a jiffy. Okay. Uh, this is the blue book. Uh, 67 to July of 69. We look at our wiper motor and our wiper switch. And our wiper switch has a black wire, a black wire coming off the second fuse, and black always being hot. Okay, so there's no green wire coming off the switch. So this cannot be the wiring diagram for this car. So we're going to look at the orange book, and the first schematic of the orange book is from August 69. Uh, would be 70 and 71 models. This is a 69, but it has a 70 wiring harness in it. So, I guess Volkswagen does this kind of thing. Here is your switch, is E, it's a little bit different layout. And here indeed is the green wire. There's only one green wire, only one, only one green wire, and it's the power wire going to the switch of course there's just a, a power wire and a ground going to the switch all the rest of them go out to the motor and if you notice it is on the second terminal instead of the first now there is a piggyback on this first one and I believe it to be virgin it's never been touched so why do they have that going on this one and why in the book do they have it on this one? Well, I think there's a mistake. And I think Volkswagen put it on this one mistakenly. I don't know why, but they put it on mistakenly. And now, if you look in this book, it's also on the second one. Now, why is it on the second one? 
and not on the first one. Okay, let me explain something to you. This fuse is very important because if this fuse fails, your car won't run. Okay, it won't run because it's not powering the coil. If you, if you, if you run this all the way down, this is the power coming off the ignition switch. It, it heats up these two. The, the, these are now hot when you have the ignition on. And this one feeds the coil. And if the coil's not being fed, if the coil is not being fed, it will not run. So if you heap all these circuits on one and say you have a failure, a fuse breaks, well, your car won't run. This way, if they have it here, the car will run, but the wipers won't work if the fuse fails, if somewhere there's a ground. It's a very good idea that Volkswagen had. However, it was not put into practice for some reason on this car. I don't know why. And I believe it not to be molested. This car is a very uh, unmolested car. And I have no reason to think that somebody got in there and went, aha, because I, I just don't think that. It's too original to do that. Anyways, okay, that's my theory on that. Um, we have our regulator we're going to have to put in. I marked a couple of the wires, so I kind of know where they go, but I kind of know where they go too. Uh, the most important one was the green and blue. Uh, so I know this one is the green one, and this one is the blue one. All the rest of them are capped and obvious. They're just, that, that's a ground and then, and then you got two big red ones, so that, that's Captain Obvious anyways. Okay, let's talk about the steering column. And the steering column, <clears throat> let's, let's look at our steering column. Uh, much like the other steering column wiring harness, we have three uh, wires coming out of the ignition side. And they are the power in and the signal, and, and okay, power in. Okay, so when you turn one click on, it, uh, it puts a signal to the coil and to the electromagnetic cutoff switch that you hear go click. Okay, so it's power, but it's also power to that, to that part of the fuse block. Uh, the other power from the fuse block comes from the light switch, I think, something like that. I'd, I'd have to look in that and see, but this is the, this is the stuff to make the car run. And the black and the red is a little heavier wire, and it goes to the signal uh, uh, to the starter that, if you remember, we made a new wire that snaked around underneath there. Okay. And then, indeed, we also have six wires that are going to uh, the turn signal and the lights. So let's discuss these. Uh, the red and the white, and or excuse me, the black and the white, and the, and the black and the green are turn signal left and right. Okay, we're going to do this, uh, we're going to do this uh, a process of elimination. The brown is always the ground. Okay, uh, the heavy wire right here, since it's going to carry quite a load, is going to be the bright switch on off. Like, um, oh, it turns the brights on and off. And then these two will have to figure out. This is a plain brown, so I'm guessing it's just a ground also. It's just a ground also. This brown and white wire, <clears throat> I don't quite know what that goes to, but we'll figure it out. It is no big deal. Uh, it doesn't have an end on it. Let me show you one more thing wiring before we get started. Uh, since I'm using an original harness, and I took those wires off. I never marked them, okay? But there's three switches coming off the brake, brake uh, master cylinder. And if you look how the wires go, one's longer, one's medium, one's shorter. Captain Obvious says they go in that, dis in that situation. Now, they're just switches, right? So it doesn't really matter which way they go, up or down, or, uh, or whatnot like that on each switch, because it's just turning it on and off, and it's just a signal. So, it probably does to Volkswagen, but it doesn't to me, because it will work just the same. This is Captain Obvious, so we'll try this all out and see if this doesn't indeed work. 
Probably will. Also, while we're down here, we can check for leaks. And we don't have any leaks coming out of our hoses. Yay! Okay, the brown, of course, is going to be the ground. The blue is going to be the reverse, because it's the lower end of the light. And then um, the gray and the red is going to be the stop in the park. And the uh, one at the top, park light, I don't know, maybe a... Maybe the maybe it's the flasher. I can't. Remember. I I don't know. So I've got that wire just about, except this one here where it has the flasher and the or the uh, the eleven fifty seven. I don't know if I have these wires reversed or but we'll find out. Um. Let's see. Yeah, this is going to be a park light, and this is going to be a turn signal. I think. Let me have a look here. We'll 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 look at that in just a second. Okay, to the engine, black is the power. I, I have a little issue here. I'll have to fix this wire. Uh, the blue one is to the uh, oil pressure sender. Um, I, I put some good line on that. I, I'm not going to put any clamps on those until I get the carburetor rebuilt. We might just run the four miles like that and, and it should be okay. Uh, the D plus is going to be the big red wire and ironically the one that has the spade terminal you cannot get the nut off of it so they've they fixed that for you brown is the ground uh, this wire here is for the uh, backup lights it comes around and it hooks into here however I do not know what this wire is for back here and maybe it's for nothing, but Volkswagen doesn't do that. I'll have to see if the reverse lights work. So we have it wired up back here. Um, I'm going to have a quick look at the uh, at the the lens to tell you. It'll tell you uh, what's the turn signal and what's the what's. I'm pretty sure that's right. The bottom one is the reverse light, and the top one is turn signal or something. Um, so let's go inside. Uh, we need a big wire going from the battery to the, speaking of battery, better put it on the charger, battery to the voltage regulator, which I have, i got to find it. The voltage regula re regulator has to go in. We need a ground strap also, so let's get after that next. Oh, it, I'm working from the back forward, so why not? So I had a choice of this little flimsy or or this giant copper one. So I chose the giant copper one, and uh, we came on down to Dan's House of Pancakes and got the squeeze on us on it, and uh, put a little uh, put a little solder in there too, and we're doing a little little heat shrink on it. Uh, you know, in wiring, ooh, that's that's a hot one. Okay, in wiring, in my opinion. More is better, you know. Um, you know, you're relying on this little tiny, this this little t this this here powers the car. You know, this wire powers the car. So you know, you're re relying on this teeny little. And I doubt that I would have even got the uh, even got the wire uh, in there all the way. I probably there had been two or three strands. I wouldn't have been able to get in and crimp. Anyways, let's get in there. This goes from the battery. To the voltage regulator. Uh, this goes uh, to the battery, to the voltage regulator, and then to the uh, to the front of the car. It's just kind of a jumper, and the voltage regulator also uses the power from that. So, okay, let's get in the car. All right. Uh, realize that this isn't going to be the battery for the car, because if you put the seat in, yeah, okay. So I. I you know, I don't have the bread for another battery, okay? And I don't even have the bread for uh, wire. I, I do, I just don't want to sp spend it. It's, it's a long story. Anyways, uh, so I, I don't like the idea of the 
of the ground being here I might change it somewhere else I might change it seat belt or something but uh, I've shined that up and shined the bolt up I bought this lovely lovely oh I just can't get over it. it's beautiful ground strap from Rock Auto uh, this was eight dollars or something like that it was just beautiful and uh, and the price on it was just that yeah, was nice uh, so we're not going to hook any power up to this yet, but my ground strap is going to be right there. We can always move things around and probably will. Uh, this is the idea just to get, we're not, I hate, I hate working backwards here, but I don't have the money to work forward right now. We'll work as forward as we can. So, uh, um, let's get, uh, let's get the ground strap on. We'll get the voltage regulator on and get things wired up. Okay, let's have a look at the voltage regulator. We have our green wire. Now there's a little red paint on these, but you know, what are you going to do? We have our green wire, and it goes to this top portion on this voltage regulator, because I've got it marked green. And then the D plus from the generator goes on this lug on the bottom. And then, of course, there's a ground right here, and it's it's capped and obvious. You know, there's three wires. One has a spade on it. Okay, it can't go on these two. Uh, the brown one, capped and obvious, is a ground. And uh, and if you look, it's going right to the frame of the of the voltage regulator, which leads, uh, you know, this red one left. Okay, so that goes on that lug, and that goes to the to the generator. On the other side, there's another Captain Obvious. You know, I mean, if you got the thing spun around, then I can understand it. But if you take pictures and put it on there, you really don't even need a schematic. I mean, you know, you can you can kind of figure things out uh, as you go along if you've got any any common sense at all. Uh, these two lugs here connect. If you if you notice right there, they connect. Okay, so one is one and one is the other, and it, it, it you know it doesn't matter. So this one's coming from the battery, the one that we made from the battery. So that's a power going in. The voltage regulator is using that, but it's also kicking it out, and that is the power to the car right there, that wire. Um, and then there's a blue wire with this with a spade terminal on it, uh, capped and obvious right there. You've got you've got those three. Now you've got some wires left over. What are they? Oh, I forgot. Uh, this one comes out of the wiring bundle up front. It's the thinner of the two wires, and it's the signal to your starter. Uh, I ended up having to clip that a little bit, uh, but we put it in there, and I put some uh, heat shrink around it, so it just ought to hold just marvelously. Lots of extra wire, so so that's good. Okay. What is this wire coming out of the, coming out and, and going up out of the loom? Well, it, it's a pretty heavy wire, and what it is, it's to your heated back glass. It's to that side right there, because the other side, if you follow it down, if you follow it down, it grounds itself to the body right there. So you've got the ground to the back glass, and then you've got the heated, heated, part right there so that's the the power to the back glass right there now there's a a little box that sits right here it's a little uh, solenoid of, of, of uh, solenoid solenoid it's not a solenoid it's a I'll, have, I'll think about it okay and the signal for that is right here so when you flip the switch up front and I'll show you that switch in a minute it flips over it's uh, it's it's to switch uh, a, a big load using a small load, so you're not running huge wires. You're running smaller wires, and uh, gotta think of what that's called. Uh, it's a relay, is what it is. Jeez, I just can't think anymore. And uh, and here's the signal wire coming from the relay. Of course, the relay is 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 attached to the body so it's grounded all right so when you flip that little switch the relay goes okay and it allows the power to go into the uh into the back glass and the power on the relay side the the heavy power is coming off 
this other wire right here and it's neat Volkswagen uses these really cool fuses I've pulled the fuse out of this it was blown anyways uh, so you know if it touches it's not going to hurt anything so nothing's going to hurt here as long as I don't turn that switch on we should be fine and incidentally I can use this since I don't have a heated back glass any longer I do have a heated back glass but it's only heated in the academic sense as it once had wires going across it it's another story um, so I could use this as a power source to turn on maybe a small fan back here that blows or 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 a, uh, a, a you know a neon Budweiser sign or uh, you know an electric dildo or something back there uh, so <laughs> I'm just joking <laughs> so so I could use that switch up front to turn on something else back there because it's you know it's 12 volts so okay uh, so we've got this kind of kind of situated where where we might be able to put power to it and not uh, burn the car down uh, a couple of things I want you to note is uh, I, I did have to weld these in place. Uh, when I put them in, because I did all kinds of shenanigans to this body, they're high. Uh, I'm not certain that these aren't correct. That's just another situation right here, we, what we have, is, is do I have the, the heater channels, do I have the heater channels in right? they're probably kicked up a bit on both sides and they probably are not supposed to lay flat they're supposed to tuck in a little bit hence that's why these things ride so high it's all measurements so take your measurements it matters not to me uh, the the flappers will still work because I have to I have to run my own I have to run my own conduit uh, for the cables anyways because I'm going to do that anyways and more than likely I'm just going to put plywood here and cover the plywood with some black material because I want plywood on both sides for security and I also want to make a cutoff switch and you can't mount a cutoff switch to that plastic gizmo they have across the back there so I, I, I want a cutoff switch I love that to be able to shut that off and your electricity is off and so you won't you know any chance of the wiring harness burning down or anything it won't happen so let's go up front uh, to the steering column and we'll work on that well I didn't think about this either but uh, how are we gonna get this steering column out of there I know that the deal is going to come out, but is it going to give it enough so it'll so it'll tilt down and so the whole thing will pull out? I'm hoping it does. I'm hoping it works like that. Let's keep our fingers crossed, huh? Oh, also, when I go to start this thing, because I had that hose and the uh, I didn't have it capped off, it probably has a slug of water in it. <laughs> so when I go to start it, it's gonna it's gonna give me fits. Well, if it if it gives me a little bit of fits. I can just take the screw out of the bottom of the carburetor, the float bowl, and water is heavier than gas, and all the water will come out and when gas starts coming in. You know what I mean. Okay, and also I wanted to point out, here is the signal switch for the heated uh, back glass. That is, the, uh, that is this black wire back here. That I showed you earlier right here this is a signal wire for it oh my god a key that's great uh, this column went in uh, just went right in the other column I had to take this part off and then the tube out the other side because it had some kind of collar right there that would not pass through that hole odd all right uh, yes, I do not have any heat shrink that big. Going to buy some. So, you know, this is, uh, we'll have to work backwards here. What are you going to do? Okay, got the wires going through there. And uh, let's explain uh, what they are. Uh, you have this red wire, and this red wire is uh, the power wire, and it's going up to the light switch. So we got we got that one run run in there. The black and white wire, excuse me, the black and red wire, the heavy wire, 
and you, and you see this wire coming out of the, the main harness right here, and you think, geez, is that the power wire for the, for the whole system? No, that would be this one right here. It's, it's uh, covered, but it snakes up, and it's the main wire that, that feeds into the light switch, so we're good there. This is the signal wire going to the starter. This uh, would be, uh, this, this goes to here, I don't know what it's for. Uh, don't know what it's for, uh, but it goes, goes to this. <laughs> I do know that the uh, green and black goes to this green and black junction. The white and black goes to the white and black junction. Uh, the small ground goes here on the, on the, on the speedometer and the large ground goes here. Now both the large ground and the uh, white and brown wire uh, which is the signal going to the uh, it's not a solenoid come on it's a I, <laughs> relay for the high beam and low beam uh, and then this is a ground that goes down to your uh, to your turn signals and such. So we've got that all wired in. Now I know you see these wires here dangling. And wow, aren't you going to attach those to the wiper motor? No, because as long as I don't touch that switch, there's no signal going to the wire wi wiper motor, so it doesn't it doesn't really matter. So um, let's see here. What did I see? What did I see? Oh, this brown wire. This is a ground. And it goes you know, up for the wiper motor. There you go. And we have these two grounds I found. Oh, I found one ground. And it has an eyelet in it. And the eyelet uh, goes into a screw here. And anyways, it's, uh, it's, the, uh, it's the ground wire for the headlights. So let's work down towards the turn signals and the headlights. We'll put new uh, bulbs in the turn signals and just attach them, kind of hanging off the side. Same with the headlights. Now I just set my headlights down there and, and just kind of wired them. There's my turn signal there, turn signal there. Got new bulbs in. And uh, oh, one more thing I want to do is I've got some lights here that have, that have, that inserts have come out of. I'll have to go through those and look and uh, and see which ones. Here's one right here. Quite a few of them. So we need to pull them out and fix them. And uh, how long has it been since you've seen one of these? That's how original this thing is. It's This has got to go something like uh, something like this or something. I don't know. I'll have to look into that and find out exactly how that goes. Maybe I'll, I'll I might dampen it and squash it. Probably will make it flat again, and uh, and here's some hen's teeth. <laughs> uh, I found a guy online who was selling these uh, on the cheap. I thought on the cheap, so uh, I snatched them up. Okay, let's put those in my speedometer. All right, I put my negative on. Let's. Uh, what do you want to do first? Let's. Uh, well, first thing, let me show you this. It's original. It's not a reproduction, it's the original one. How many of them have you seen? Now, how many Volkswagens have you seen with lots of original fuses? <laughs> Look at those, they're original. <laughs> they're the original fuse. Uh, I'm going to take those out and clean them up, but uh, uh, let's see what happens here. Uh, what do you want to do first? Uh, let's do lights. Oh, I got something there. Hey, I got a parking light over there. And one there. Holy crap! <laughs> oh, I got lights in the dash. Look at, look at this. Look at that. Okay, let's try... Uh, uh, oh, yeah, the lights work. There's the, the headlights. Let's try high beams. Holy cow, it works! I've got them switched around though. <laughs> oh, it's amazing!
amazing. That's amazing. It works. It works. It works. It works. It works. It works. <laughs> I'm floored. I'm floored. I'm floored. Okay. Uh, you know, let's see something else here. Let's turn the turn the lights off. Let's try that. Ain't gonna work. Oh my god, it works. It's un that's unbelievable. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It's it's <laughs> wow. Fabulous. Look at that. I even got the right wire on there. Ah, let's try uh Let's try, let's shut that off. Oh, let's try the ignition. <laughs> God, what? How about reverse lights? That, that, that could never happen. Not in a million years. Nah. We'll have to work that out probably. Let's see if I can. Anything? Let's see, here's a, let's wiggle that wire, wiggle that a little bit, nope, oops, I don't think I have any on the other side, okay, we can work that out, somehow, uh, let's see, brake lights, have we got any brake lights, let's see here, <laughs> brake lights, <laughs> all right, oh man, I wonder if it'll crank. Yeah, it probably will. Yeah, okay. So we're good there. I need to shut that off and take the ground off. I'm going to call that a win for right now. Uh, this video is getting a little long, so uh, I'm going to cut it off and uh, clean up my mess. And uh, we'll move forward from here. I'll chase the reverse lights. Hmm. Did I have, did I have turn signals? Oh, I'm shocked. <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> Holy cow. That's just great. <laughs> That's just great. So the only thing I see there's, uh, yeah, test this here, test on this a little bit. The light might be burnt out in that, and reverse lights. Oh, do I have a dome light? I don't know if the dome light work. Yeah, I'll have to, have to test on that. So, dome light, reverse lights, brake test light. <laughs> floored all right like and subscribe thanks for being in my garage thanks for wrenching and uh, we'll get her done all right you guys take care be careful out there all right bye